Today we are going to be looking at a new way that we can solve quadratics. We've been talking about how we can solve quadratics with completing the square. And we want to try to find a formula that will allow us to complete the square for all quadratics. That formula is called the quadratic formula. But we're going to try and look where that quadratic formula comes from. It wasn't just made up. It's kind of big and lengthy. So students think, oh man, this crazy person is just telling me I need to memorize this formula. Okay, but I actually want you to see that this comes from completing the square. So we know that every quadratic can be represented as ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, right? Where a can be any value, b can be any value, c can be any value. So whether they're fractions, decimals, um, and any number they want to be. Okay, we know completing the square works the best when b is even, but we also know that for it to work, completing the square actually has to be in the form x squared, so a has to be 1, plus bx equals, and then that c is moved over to the other side. So if we know that this is representing every single quadratic and we want to complete the square, the first thing that we're going to have to do is get it in the correct format for completing the square. So that correct format is going to be that we need that c moved over to the other side, Okay, and also that we need a to be 1. So if we want to get rid of something being multiplied by a, in the math world, we know we undo multiplication with division. And so therefore, we're going to have to divide by a. And when we divide by a, that division goes all the way through. So a divided by a cancels, and we'll have x squared plus b over ax equals negative c over a. So we have just taken every single quadratic that exists and we have put it in the correct format to complete the square. So now if we're going to complete the square, again, we're going to have to just follow through here. Don't just shut down and say it's too hard because there's letters, but we're going to find B. We know that B is always the number sitting in front of the X. So in front of the X right now, we have a B over A. Okay, and we know that we want to take half of that. So if we're taking half of b over a, right, we're going to multiply that times 1 half. So I'm taking b over a, and I'm multiplying that times 1 half. So that's going to be b over 2a. And now I want to square that. So I want to take my b over 2a, and I want to square it. We know from our exponents unit that when we square it, that exponent of 2 goes to every single thing inside the parentheses. So I'm going to get a b squared over 4. 2 squared is 4. And then a squared. Our next step for completing the square then tells us to add that value to each side. So I'm going back up to my original where I had it in the correct format to complete the square. And I'm adding that b squared over 4a squared to each side. So my original problem was x squared plus b over ax. Okay, and I'm going to add in that b squared over 4a squared. And on this side, I'm going to add in that b squared over 4a squared. And now I want to combine my numbers on the right. So if I'm looking on that right hand side over here I want to try and combine these we can only add fractions when they have common denominators currently they do not have common denominators so we're gonna have to do a little bit of work to make them have common denominators right so common denominators we multiply so this one has an a and this one has a 4 with two a's so this fraction is missing a 4 and missing an a so I need to take this negative c over a Right? And the whole way we make it have a common denominator is by multiplying by a fancy 1. So whatever it needs to have on the bottom, I also have to multiply by on the top. So that's going to give me a negative 4ac on top and a 4a squared on bottom. Okay, And now I need to add that with the b squared over 4a squared. Okay, So now they have a common denominator, so they can go together. On top, I'm just going to rewrite this in reverse order as subtraction instead of that negative sitting out in the front. 
Mm -hmm. My next step is gonna be to factor the left-hand side. Now, typically we might say, what in the world? I don't know how to factor that left-hand side. But remember, we do know that it always factors into a binomial squared. Okay, we know our other side is b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Okay, and we know it always goes into that middle number. So that was the b over 2a. So this is going to be an x plus b over 2a. Okay, we know our next step tells us to take the square root of each side. So I'm going to square root this side and I'm going to square root this side. We know that the two square roots, or the, sorry, not the two square roots, the exponent of 2 and the square root, right, cancel each other out. So that gives us an x plus b over 2a. Okay, so now when we square root and we look at this, Okay, we're gonna square root the top and we're gonna square root the bottom. So this is really the same thing as saying the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over the square root of 4a squared. And we do know how to take the square root of 4a squared. Okay, we added the square root, so we know we need a plus or minus. That top we can't do anything with. We don't know how to simplify when there's addition or subtraction underneath the square root. Okay, that bottom, if we prime factor, we get a 2 times 2 times an A times an A. So a 2 comes out and an A comes out, and we get a 2A on the denominator. Okay, I actually did this step right here, so we already have that simplified. Okay, and then we are going to solve for X. So to finish solving this for X, we're going to subtract that B over 2A on each side. So I'm undoing addition with subtraction. Okay, so we know these are going to cancel. Then I'll have x equals. And I'm just going to rewrite this piece first. Plus or minus. I'm just, right, these are both on the same side. I'm just writing them as one big thing. But these have common denominators. And because they have common denominators, we can just write them together with one big Denominator. We don't need to write it as two separate things. And so we'll get x equals negative b plus or minus the square root. Oop, I think I'm a little bit too low there. Minus 4ac all over 2a. And this right here is the quadratic formula where we took every single quadratic and we completed the square on it. So now instead of having to deal with using completing the square when we have fractions or decimals or weird numbers, we can simply use this formula to complete the square without actually having to complete the square. And that's what we're gonna spend the next two days working on.